guys, good morning and happy spring. Today happens to be our first day of spring. So without further ado, let's say hello. Ready? Hello, cha-cha-cha. Hello, cha-cha-cha. Hello, and how are you? Cha-cha-cha. I'm fine, cha-cha-cha. I'm fine, cha-cha-cha. And I hope that you are too. Cha-cha-cha. Good morning, friends. Okay, let's start with our calendar. Who could tell me what the name of our month is? That hasn't changed. It begins with an M, which says, mmm, mmm, what month is it? Good, it's March. Can we say March? Ready? March. Good. We're in the month of March. We're in the month of March. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. We're in the month of March. We're in the month of March. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Very good. Okay, so now let's count how many days we have so far in March. I know it's so hard to see. Oh, if we had a regular calendar, it would be a little easier. So I apologize, guys, but it's okay. We'll make two. So ready? Let's count how many days we have so far in March. Ready? Everyone counts along. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Hmm. What number comes after eighteen? Good, it's 19, which is a 1 and a 9. Could we say 19? Ready? 19. Good, so today is the 19th. Now, as I said before, hold on one second. Today is a special day because today is the first day of spring. So that's our new season. Could we all say that together? Can we say spring? Ready? Spring. Now, spring is a season where we get lots of rain. And as I'm recording this right now, it's actually raining right outside my window. Now, there's a reason we get lots of rain in spring. We talked about this a little bit last month with our light unit when we did our plant experiment. Remember, plants need three things to grow. And one of them happens to be water. They also need sunlight, right, and air. But one of those things happens to be water, okay? So with all the rain that we're getting this month, it's going to help our plants to grow. And hopefully we'll get lots of beautiful flowers and grass and trees and all kinds of green things that will help us to grow because of the rain this month. That's actually why I wore my flower shirt today was because today's the first day of spring. So attached to this video is our usual lesson plan and in that lesson plan happens to be a link for a video about the first day of spring from brain pop now i know i asked you guys to see if you could set up a brain pop account but this video happens to be their movie of the week so even if you didn't set up your brain pop account that doesn't matter if you just go right to the link i sent you you'll be able to watch a video to learn all about spring which is our new season and it happens to be one of my favorite seasons so it's really exciting Okay, so let's go over our year, because our year hasn't changed. Our year is still the same. It's still this year, which is 2020. Can we say that together? Ready? 2020. Good. So today is March 19th, 2020. Very good, guys. Okay, so... Let's go over the stuff we've been learning. Okay, so let's go over our letter of the week first. This was our letter of the week. Who remembers the name of this letter? What letter is it? Hmm, what letter is it? It is the letter P. Can we say P? Ready? P. Good. And who can tell me what sound does P make? What sound does P make? Good. It says pa pa. Can we say that together? Ready? Pa pa. 
Good, like our friend, Mr. Somebody. Hello, tulips. <laughs> Can we say pa, pa, penguin? Ready? Pa, pa, penguin. Very good. <clears throat> so, let's do our sight word. So, our sight word this week is F R O M. Hmm. Who remembers? What is F R O M spell? Good, the word is from. Can we say from? Ready? From. Like I am walking home from the park, right? I can come back from someplace. I'm walking home from the park. So can you guys tell me a sentence for from? Think of one. Hmm. What's your sentence? It's a pretty good sentence. Good. One more time, can we say from? From. Very good, guys. So... We have our word family for this week. Remember, just like last week's word family, the ending of our word family actually makes its own words, which is one of our old sight words. And this is A-N. A-N says and. Can we say and? Ready? And. Good. Remember, we're going to use this ending to build new words with some letters. So... First, I'm going to use the letter C. Okay, who could tell me what sound the letter C makes? Good, it says ka, ka. Can we say that? Ready? Ka, ka. And now I'm going to add and to that. So I have ka, and, ka, and, ka, and. Hmm, what word do we hear? Good, it's can. Can we say can? Ready? Can. Good. Now I'm going to make another word with the letter P. Mm, we definitely know P because it's our letter of the week. So what sound does P make? Good. It says pa, pa. Can we say pa, pa? Very good. Now I'm going to add and to that. So I have pa, and, pa, and, pa, and. So what word do we hear there? Good. It's pan. Can we say pan, pan? Very good. And the other two we've done so far, we have the letter R. What sound does the letter R make? Good, it says er. Can we say er? Er. And we're going to add and to that. So er, and, r, and, r, and. Hmm, what word do we hear? Good, it's ran, like I ran a race. Can we say ran? Ready? Ran. Very good. And now last was our one from yesterday. The letter M. What sound does M make, friends? Good. It says mmm. Can we say mmm? Like mmm, that's delicious. Can we say mmm? Good. And then we're going to add an to that. So we have m, an, an, an. What words do we hear? Good, it's man. And remember, man is a grown-up boy like a daddy. Can we say man? Ready? Man. Very good. Now let's say them all together. Ready? Repeat after me. Pan. And. Can. Can. Pan. Pan. Ran. Ran. Man. Man. Very good, friends. Okay, let's go over our numbers of the month. Okay, our two numbers of the month are a, a 1 and a 3. Who can raise their hand and tell me what number does a 1 and a 3 make? What number does a 1 and a 3 make? Good, it's 13. Can we say 13? Ready? 13. Good. And then our next number is a 1 and a 4, which is the number 14. Can we say 14? Ready? 14. Good. So let's say these numbers again. We have 13, 13, and 14, 14. Very good, guys. 
Now let's do our shape of the month. And I'm also going to write our shape of the month in our color of the month. Okay. What color is this, friends? What color is this? Good. It's blue. Can we say blue? One more time. Blue. Blue is our color of the month. Now let's go over our shape of the month. Hmm. This shape has two names. Who can tell me one of this shape's names? Good. And then what's the second one? Very good. So our first one is rhombus. Can we say that together? Ready? Rhombus. And what's our second? It's diamond. Can we say diamond? One more time. Diamond. So let's count how many straight sides our rhombus or diamond has. We have one, two, three, four. Good. Can we say four straight sides? Ready? Four straight sides. So our diamond rhombus has four straight sides. And all the sides have to be the... What has to be? All the sides have to be the same. Can we say all the sides are the same? Ready? All the sides are the same. Very good. So now let's go over some of the things we've been learning about water, right? Let's learn about what we've been learning about water. I'm always going to take a drink of water because my allergies are making me lose my voice again, friends. You guys know this always happens when it rains. So hold on a sec. So one of the things we were talking about yesterday were the three states of matter that water could be in. I just showed you one of them. When I drank my glass of water, which came out of the sink, it was a liquid. Okay, it was a liquid. Can we say liquid? Liquid. Remember, liquid is like the water that comes out of the sink. It's our rainwater. It's what's falling from the sky right now outside the window. Although you guys can't really see out my window because I have the curtains closed, but it is raining. Okay, and that's the water that comes out of the sky for when we have rain. Can we say liquid? Ready? Liquid. Our second type was our ice cube, which I don't have any ice cubes with me. All the ice cubes I had from yesterday are melted by now. Our second type was a solid. Okay, so our liquid was our rain. Our solid was like our ice cube, right? Remember, solids are hard, okay? They don't take the shape of their container, like my water is the same shape as my glass or whatever I put it in. My solid stays the same shape, okay? In this case, it happens to be an ice cube. The water doesn't change shape, okay? Remember, when I put my ice cube in, it still stays the same shape. So can we say solid? Solid. And our last one is a gas. Okay, remember, a gas is like the oxygen we're breathing in and the carbon dioxide we're breathing out. Okay, so remember when we heat our water up, it can turn into steam. Like when we put pasta on the stove and we heat it up, steam comes out of the pot, right? And that happens to be our gas. Now, if you guys didn't see, this morning I uploaded to YouTube a video that I had made in my kitchen about the three different types of water, the liquid, solid, and gas. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, go check that out after this video, and you'll see a little activity I did to teach you the three different states of matter. So let's say that together. Ready? One more time. Solid. Oh, I said that out of order. Try that again. <laughs> liquid. Liquid. Solid. Solid. And gas. Gas. Very good. We also learned our four types of precipitation. Let's go over what our four types of precipitation are. And precipitation is a big word, but... It means, remember, the things that fall from our clouds, okay? So it sounds like a big word, but it really doesn't mean anything fancy. Can we say it together? Ready? Precipitation. Good. Precipitation means the water that's falling out of our clouds. Now, remember, there's four types of precipitation. One of them is happening right now outside of our window, and it happens to be rain. Can we all, oh, I gotta make that a little darker. Sorry, guys. Hold on. There we go. I should be able to see this now. Good. Can we all say rain? Ready? 
Rain. And rain is our liquid water that falls from the sky, right? What's happening right now? Remember, I said we're going to get lots of rain in our new season of spring. Okay. So remember, rain happens when it's warmer, such as spring right now or summer or even the earlier parts of the fall. But when it starts to get colder, like in the really late fall and winter, we get a different type. We get our friend, Mr. Snow. Okay, and our little snowflake. Good. Can we say snow? So remember, we get snow when the water freezes, okay? When the water gets cold and freezes, it turns into snow. Good. Can we say snow? Awesome. So now we're going to do our other two types of precipitation, which also happen when water gets cold. Our next type is sleet, which look like, remember, little tiny pieces of ice. Can we say sleet? Ready? Sleet. So sleet happens again during winter when the water freezes and it turns into little tiny pieces of ice that fall from the clouds because the water freezes and turns into sleet. Now our last kind is hail. Now remember, these are big or chunks of ice. Now hail is different because hail happens during thunderstorms, okay? The water still freezes in the sky, but not because it's winter. It's because the temperature's changing during a thunderstorm, okay? Our thunderstorms generally happen mostly during the summer, okay? And again, we get bigger chunks. They can be like the size of my thumbnail, or they can be as big as a golf ball, okay? That's our hail. Can we say hail? Good. One more time. Let's go over our four types of precipitation. We have rain, rain, snow, snow, sleet, sleet, and hail. Very good. So, while we learn about all of these things, I'm going to combine the two things we've been learning, our types of matter and our precipitation. We're going to learn about something today called the water cycle. Okay? What the water cycle is, is it's the way that water travels around our Earth. Okay? Could we say water cycle? Ready? water cycle. Now our water cycle has different steps in it, okay? Because our water travels all around our earth. So how does this happen? Well, the first step we're going to start with is, here's, my, here's a lake, okay? Here's a lake. And what happens is, just like the water I showed you on our stove heats up, our water in our lake also heats up. And now let's think outside, friends. What would be the thing that would heat up the water? It would be our sun, right? Remember, our sun from our last unit is our biggest source of light. And remember, it doesn't give us just light. It gives us heat. So now let's think from what we've learned, okay? What happens when liquid water, like liquid water in a lake, heats up? Remember, when water heats up, it turns into a gas, okay? So the water on my lake heats up, okay? And it travels up in the sky as water vapor, okay? So my water in my lake heats up and travels up, up, up in the sky, just like our water on their stove travels up as a gas. It travels up, up, up in the sky as a water, as water vapor, which is a gas. Now this has a fancy pants word too, okay? When water, liquid water heats up and turns into a gas and goes up, 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 we call that evaporation. Can we say that? I know it's a big word, but it just means water heating up from liquid and turning into gas. Can we say evaporation? Ready? Evaporation. Good. So our water heats up with the step of evaporation. Then it goes up into the sky, right? And what does it do there? Well, it turns into a cloud, okay? It turns into a cloud. Now, remember we said our cloud is made up of billions and billions and billions of drops of water. Well, how does that happen? Okay, so our water evaporates and travels up from a liquid into a gas. It gets into the sky, okay? When it gets into the sky, remember it's much colder up in the sky, okay? So our water droplets form now and start to 
smush together and they smush together and they smush together and they smush together and they smush together when they get colder and they keep going and going and going and then they form a cloud okay this process of the water droplets getting colder and coming together to make a cloud is called condensation. It's a big fancy word, but all it means is our water droplets coming together when they get cold to make a cloud. Could we say condensation? Ready? Condensation. Okay, that's how our clouds are made. Now, Here's the stuff we've been talking about. There's four of these. Our clouds don't stay like this forever. Remember, as more and more water droplets gather, they get heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier until they can't hold the water anymore. And it comes down, down, down to earth as either rain, hail, sleet, or snow. And we know the name of this step because we've been talking about it. When our water falls down, as hail, sleet, snow, or rain, we call this precipitation. We know that word already. It's precipitation. That's the water that falls out of the clouds, right? So, from our water condenses, okay, and comes down as precipitation. Now, where does this water go? Well, when our water falls down, 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 guess what? It happens to go back into my lake, okay, or my river or my pond. And then when it falls back in the pond, it heats up by the sun, goes up as a gas as water vapor, then gets cold, condenses into the clouds, and then it falls down, down, down against precipitation, which then goes into the lake, which then heats up and turns into a cloud, which then comes down, and then it goes into the lake, and you guys get it, okay? It keeps going over and over and over. This cycle goes on and on and on. What a cycle means is a big circle, okay? And as you can see, I just made a big circle with my steps, okay? So the water cycle goes on forever and ever and ever. It actually never stops, okay? That's what the word cycle means. It goes on and on. So, so much is so that the water you might have been drinking today out of your faucet might have been the same water that a dinosaur actually drank, okay? Because this cycle goes on forever, okay? That's what the word cycle means. Again, so our water cycle has been going on forever. So much that so like that our water might have been the same dinosaur that a, water that a dinosaur actually drank. So... To learn more about the water cycle, we're going to learn a song, which I, I'm going to email to the mommies and daddies, and I hope all my friends will help me, okay? It's a song that goes to the tune of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain, okay? And we're going to go like this, because remember, water is a cycle, so you guys are going to go like this with your hands to show me a cycle, okay? And then we're going to learn the steps. Ready? One, two, three. Water travels in a cycle, yes it does, yes it does. Water travels in a cycle, yes it does, yes it does. It goes up as evaporation, forms clouds as condensation, comes down as precipitation, yes it does, yes it does. Good, one more time, we're going to sing that, ready? Water travels in a cycle, yes it does, yes it does. Water travels in a cycle, yes it does, yes it does. It goes up as evaporation, forms clouds as condensation, comes down as precipitation. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Good job, guys. And we're going to keep practicing that song because it's an awesome way to remember the steps of the water cycle. So I actually have a book here about the steps of the water cycle. And it's about snowflakes. Remember, snowflakes are one of our four forms of precipitation. Okay, remember snowflakes happen when it gets cold out, like during the winter, and our water freezes. So we're going to read this book. It's called The Snowflake, A Water Cycle Story, to learn more about our friend, the water cycle. Speaking of water. Okay, so this book takes place over a whole year. It's going to show us how the water travels throughout our calendar year. First January, right? January is our first month. On a moonless night, a tiny snowflake fell from a great gray cloud. It floated slowly downward with thousands of other flakes coming to rest on the jagged peak of a mountain. 
And again, just like today, we could see our clouds are gray, right? Remember when it's raining, generally it's pretty cloudy outside, right? The clouds are darker, they're gray. And they're blocking out our light. Just like right now, it's not very sunny outside because my clouds are blocking my light because it's raining. Here, the same things happen when it's snowing. February. A wind whistled over the mountain, carrying the snowflake back up in the air. So our snowflakes floating through the air. The snowflake twisted and spun, swirling into a pond on the mountainside. The snowflake melted into a water droplet, but as the days grew colder, the pond froze. So our snowflake went down, melted into the pond, but then it got cold again and our pond froze. Our pond turned into a giant sheet of ice. March, <gasps> that's our, our month now. As the sun grew warmer, right, because now it's spring in March, the ice began to melt. The snowflake became a droplet of water once again. It fell through the crack in the bottom of the rocky pond and trickled down into the ground. So the water melted and now it's going down, down, down into the ground. Downward it sank into the blackness within a mountain, along with millions of other drops of liquid water. It splashed into an underground stream that flowed down into the earth. Okay, so now our water is going through our earth. This is what we call groundwater. This is where we get our drinking water from, okay? We actually get the water we drink from the water that flows to the ground. April, it's next month. After a long journey, the stream turned upward. Okay, here's our stream. It bubbled through the ground in an icy spring. Sparkling in the sunlight, the droplet rushed into a brook. So here it goes, it's rushing. It spilled out over a waterfall and surged into a raging river. The droplet flowed past villages and cities under a great gray bridge where cars and buses carried people to and fro. So it circled all the way down the mountain to the city. And this looks kind of like our city, right? So here the water's flowing past the city. It looks just like our city, New York City. May. A shiny metal pump sucked the droplet through a maze of zigzagging pipes through an irrigation system of a nearby farm. So what an irrigation system is, it's the water that's used to water plants, okay? These people look like they're growing some cabbages, okay? So it's the water that's used to water their cabbages. It spun through a long rubber hose, swished into a swirling sprinkler and, sprinkler and squirted through the air. The droplet fell on a great arc, landing at last onto the leaf of a cabbage plant. So it came through a sprinkler to water the farmer's cabbages. Now let's see where it goes. June. In the chill of the morning, a heavy blanket of fog rolled through the farm. Remember, fog is when it looks like there's almost clouds on the ground. Okay, it's very hard to see. As you can see, you can barely see the picture. It's hard to see when it's cloudy. And clouds are actually made of, I mean, when it's foggy. Okay, fog is actually made of water droplets. A blanket of fog rolled in over the farm. The droplet, droplet slowly evaporated. Remember, evaporated means it gets warmer and then rises up as a gas. It floated into the thick gray clouds. But soon the rising sun began to bake the air, and as the fog rose higher and higher into the sky, it became a cloud, okay? So as the fog's evaporating and warming up, it's going up, up, up into the sky and forming our clouds. July. Uh, the cloud joined a mass of darkening storm clouds. Remember, they're dark and gray. The storm clouds flashed um, lightning, thunder rumbled, and a torrent, which means a ton of raindrops, dived towards the earth. Remember, when we have lots and lots of rain, we call that pouring. The droplet rocketed downward and splashed into the clear waters of a reservoir. Reservoirs where lots of drinking water is stored. It was sucked through a series of filters that removed all the dirt until only pure water remained. So it fell from our cloud during a thunderstorm into a reservoir, which is where all our water is kept. Then it was clean so we could drink it. This water has gone a pretty far away. Let's see where he goes next. August. The droplet swirled 
through a long metal pipe. It was pumped into a smaller pipe and then an even smaller pipe. So it's going through all the pipes where it stopped and started and stopped and started again in a herky jerky motion. So this is how the water gets to our house, right? It travels through pipes. So now our water droplet is traveling through some pipes. Let's see where he goes next. September. In the bathroom, a young girl twisted on the faucet and a droplet of water poured out into her bathroom sink. So here the little girl is turning on the water. Now the water is coming out into her sink. The girl dipped her hands into the water, lifted the droplet onto her cheek. So now she's washing her face, but then now our water is changing again. A second later, our water was falling, 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 splashing, swirling, spinning down the drain into yet another pipe. So after the girl used it, the water went down the drain and is now traveling through the pipes again. Hmm. Now let's see where our droplet goes. October. After a long, dark journey, the droplet poured into the ocean. Wow, look, so we can see all our fishies here. It flowed past fields of waving seagrass over corals of many color and into the mouth of a great striped fish. <sighs> he passed through the fish's body and the droplet of water returned to the sea. So wow, he's gone away from being a snowflake now into the sea. November. Rising towards the ocean surface, the droplet was pulled steadily towards the shore. So it's traveling through here onto the shore. On the crest of a mighty wave in the foam, it bubbled and crashed onto the beach of a tropical island. December. In the sunlight of a winter's morning, the droplet evaporated. Remember, evaporated means it heated up from a liquid and turned into a gas. It rose into the air, entering a great gray cloud. A whistling wind pushed the cloud across the sea, past cities and towns, beyond an icy spring and over a ranging river. It drifted past a waterfall and onto a frozen pond on a moonless night. A tiny snowflake fell from the cloud. It floated downwards with thousands of other flakes coming to rest on the jagged peak of a mountain. So now we're back to it being a snowflake again. The end. It says, for years and years, water has been freezing, melting, evaporating, condensing, and freezing again. It travels all over the world in many forms. Water has been around for longer than people have. Think about that. In fact, water has been here almost as long as the earth has been here. So the next time you throw a snowball or jump into a swimming pool or drink some ice cold water on a hot summer's day, stop and think for a moment. Because some of that very water might have tumbled over the Niagara Falls or risen as a morning mist in the steaming jungles of Africa or lay frozen for centuries inside a glacier on the North Pole. It might have even been sipped by your great-great-grandmother in a cup of afternoon tea, or it could have been used by Abraham Lincoln to wash his hands before dinner at the White House. It might have even been guzzled by a thirsty Tyrannosaurus Rex in prehistoric swamp millions of years ago. The end. So our water has traveled very far, and that is what the water cycle is. It's how our water travels on our earth. So if you guys look again at our attached awesome plant, you'll find a great video about water. And it happens to be one from SciShow Kids with Jesse and Squeaks. We love Jesse and Squeaks. So you can watch that video after you watch me to learn more about our water cycle. So before we go, we are going to do some math. Okay. And I'd like to do a math counting song, which my friends are familiar with this song, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. Okay, We're going to sing five little monkeys, but instead of five monkeys, I'm going to make it ten monkeys. Now, last time we sang this, we sang it with our felt board pieces, but I also only have five monkeys for my felt board pieces. So when we sing the song today, I'm just going to write the numbers on the board. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
So we're going to sing the same song. We're going to make it 10 monkeys instead of five. Okay. So everyone show me 10 fingers. We're going to sing the same song, but with 10 monkeys. Okay. Ready? 10 little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So we have 10. Take away one is nine. Good. Ready? So now we're down to nine. Aaron, show me nine fingers. Nine little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So we have nine. Take away one is eight. Good. So everyone show me eight fingers. Ready? Eight little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So we have eight. Take away one is seven. Now we're down to seven monkeys. <clears throat> Ready? Seven little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So seven, take away one is six. So now we're down to six monkeys. Ready? Six little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys. Monkeys jumping on the bed. So we have six. Take away one is five. Now we're down to five monkeys. So everyone show me five fingers. Ready? Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. So we had five, take away one is four. Now we're down to four monkeys. Ready? Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. So you have four, take away one is three. Ready? So now we have three monkeys. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So we have three, take away one is two. And we're down to two monkeys. Two little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So we have two. Take away one is just one. One little monkey jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. So now we have one. Take away one is... Zero! No more monkeys. Say bye-bye, monkeys. Bye-bye, monkeys. 
So the last thing we're just going to do today, friends, is our snapshots game. We've played this before, okay? Um, I'm going to try to do it on the table because when we tried things on the couch yesterday, it didn't work so great. So let's try to see if we can do this on the table. So just bear with me for a second. Good. Okay. I'm going to get our snapshots game. All set up. Okay. So we've played snapshots before, friends, so you'll remember this. I'm going to make a pizza, okay? Oh, the angle on this is a little interesting again. Perfect, okay. So I'm going to make a pizza. Remember, my pizza is going to be a secret, okay? So I'm going to cover it up. Let's see, can I cover it with this? Yeah, I can. Okay, so I'm going to make a pizza. Okay, and I'm going to not show you how many counters there are. So first, you guys, close your eyes and cover them. Close your eyes and cover them, okay? I'm going to make my secret pizza. Keep your eyes closed. I'll tell you when you can open them. No peeking. Okay, ready? Open your eyes. So right now my pizza is in the oven, okay? Same as usual. I'm going to quickly uncover it. And then you guys are going to show me with your fingers how many pizza, I mean, how many pepperoni sauce. Already? One, two, three. Oh, and I cover it again. So show me with your fingers how many pepperoni did you just see? Good. Okay, ready? Let's double check. We have one, two, three. Four. We have four pepperonis. Everyone show me four fingers. Good. Okay, so now the same thing. I'm going to put our pizza back in our oven. Okay. You guys, close your eyes and cover them. Close your eyes. Cover them. Cover them. Cover them. Keep them closed. Keep them closed. Keep them closed. Keep them closed while I make our new pizza. And you can open your eyes. Okay. Ready? I'm going to briefly show you my pizza. So you better be looking. Brief means quick, right? So ready? One, two, three. How many counters do you see? And cover it. So everyone show me with your fingers. How many counters did you see? Good. Let's double check. We have one, two, three, four, five. Good. I'm going to make another one. So ready? Same thing. Close your eyes. Cover them. Cover them. Cover them. Cover them. Keep them closed. Keep them closed while I add our new pepperoni. Okay, open your eyes. Ready? Now I'm going to show you my new pizza. So ready? Everyone make sure you're looking. One, two, three. How many counters do you see? Show me with your fingers. Show me with your fingers. How many counters did you just see? Good. Check them. Ready? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six counters or pepperoni. And I'm going to do one more. So same thing, close your eyes and cover them. I'm going to make another new pizza. So close your eyes, cover them, cover them, keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed. And open your eyes. Okay, ready? Now I'm going to show you really quick how many counters we have, and you guys are going to show me with your fingers. Ready? One, two, three. Look and see. And cover. Okay, so show me with your fingers how many pepperonis did you see? Good. Okay, now let's count them together. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we have seven pepperoni. Okay, we have seven pepperoni. Good job, guys. And parents, if you want to play this game, you can play this with literally anything. It doesn't have to be the counters. You can use like crackers or cookies or little toys, like any blocks, like little Lego blocks you have, whatever you have. You can play this game too. And this is a fun and easy game to play. Okay, it's called Snapshots. So, friends, that's it for today. Um, again, please look at the attached lesson plan. You'll find a link to our Brain Pop video, which, again, is free. So, even if you didn't sign up, you can still watch it. Okay. Um, <laughs> you hear 
or the guinea pigs are playing in the background. Um, you'll be able to watch our video to learn all about spring, and there's also a video about the water cycle. Okay, and then for our second circle, I attached or read a lot of a really, really good book about water. One I don't unfortunately have, but I want you guys to hear, so if you have a chance, please open that video and watch it because it's a great book. I just don't have it, and I'd love for you to be able to read it. So that's it for today. Bye, friends. I'll see you tomorrow.